Yes. All right, so next we're going to call up in order of the sign up. Um, those are, that would like to address the uh, Thanks, committee. Now, I want to remind everybody again, be respectful of everybody's uh, their opinions are, if you're not, uh, if you got a turn, confident with the rep, please keep that to yourself. Uh, you want to be respectful of everybody else, and it's for the difficult for us to hear if other people are talking amongst themselves for us to be able to hear this. Again, come up, please. Uh, there's a timer up here. It'll, it'll be green. Uh, people will start it. First on this, we have uh, Patrick Hill. <coughs> also, is there anyone out in the, uh, before you start, uh, is there anybody out in the hall in the bank? There's probably some spaces over here. Like, <coughs> Patrick Hill, Patrick Hill, Patrick Hill, Patrick Hill, Patrick Hill, my relationship with Brown goes back to 1946 when my mom came here from Brown. Can you list your address, please? The 537 East Loan. Um, that's where my son, my handicap son, lives when we were at the Pan Fort. I know about these streets. It's just part of the record. Oh, that's fine. I also met my wife there at the Brown. She was a Brown member. We used to be a Brown member, but I grew up in this land field. Um, on my uh, sewer, water, and septic business, was invited by the Brown members to be located on their property. And we served their uh, excavation, septic, sewer, drainage, snow plowing, driveway work for 26 years, free of charge in exchange for space. In the uh, late 90s, when their septic systems were failing, I pursued uh, hooking them up to the public sewer. And if you notice in this uh, utility assessment from the days, there's no mention of sewer. Water, but not sewer. And this he told me that if I wanted to hook those buildings up, I had to come all the way down to the moose lodge and rebuild that sewer all the way up to Grove if I wanted to hook the property up to the public sewer. Should I respond? No, no, it's my turn. Uh, then called uh, MST, my friends at MST, and said, Where is Polk Run at? Does Polk Run have room for 214? 209 homes. No evidence. No evidence study has been done. Fort Lowland gets involved to provide utilities to the site. Strong recommend you guys understand where you stand with the sewer. The estimators I spoke to this week said, read on that sewer from Moose Lodge to Brownville. It's probably three quarter million dollar job. There's homework. Facts. The access road from Lepanon to 48 presents the city with an opportunity to relieve the traffic that uses Loveland as a pass through, going from 275 to Warren County and parts east of Loveland. That road could be upsized without houses to back the driveway or back out into the street and get lots of your cars out of downtown. Final point is the reason Grace has been chosen is because the ground has chosen the highest bid. They offer more money. My other developer, in my business, I'm a developer. There's lots of them. There's several planes lower density, lower price. I don't blame Greece for wanting that number of homes. At $7.7 .7 million, they need that many homes. Please don't let the ground hold Loveland hostage and take their money elsewhere. There are other less dense planes that the ground passed over because they want the highest dollar. They're a non-profit. Who is Thea Nugent? She lives in Garden City, New York. That's who signed this application. You live in Loveland. She's not proud of her schools or her streets.
If the residents want 50, acre house, 50 acres per house, it's your job to get it done. Somehow, recently, council has decided that they know what is best, and their ideas come first. Developers second, bars third, and residents last. I keep using council here, even though we are a more zoning. Why? Because zoning people are appointed by a liberal mayor approved by a liberal city council to do these jobs. So I wonder if zoning is controlled by council. I'm not saying they are, I don't know. The case in point is the, uh, the case in point is the awesome, can't say it, is the awesome hill development. The zoning and council ignored several hundred signatures, some government ordinances, the city plan, the fact that it's outside the city proper, two plans by the developer, each more dense than the other, and council approved it anyway. What happens next? Thanks. Buildings that have 
building that has taken place in recent years between Paxton and Oakland, water runoff seems to have increased to the point that flooding of residential yards is becoming more common. How has the new higher density plan increase in roof areas and paved roads address water runoff and retention time? Two, traffic in the morning and late afternoon is often a problem on the winding, hilly approach roads due to commuters and school pickup and drop off traffic. How is the traffic congestion caused by the addition of a couple hundred homes going to contribute to the situation? The traffic study that you cited was done in 2021. Um, you said it was done a year ago. Many people were working from home at that time. So perhaps not our friend. Yeah. Will all of the designated Claremont County Parks area be safe from development before the park area is rezoned for residential or worse mixed use? Noise, lights, litter, congestion, and runoff will follow. Everyone welcomes young children into the area, school age children into the area, but has a developer identified the cost associated with the increasing school building infrastructure? Who pays for this? The developer, the new residents, or the taxpayer. Please consider in detail the ramifications of proceeding with capping their lots. Once they are built without abating these issues, the after the fact remediation costs will be quite costly for everyone except the developer. Veronica Brannon, Loveland resident. The tipping point, our quality of life is at stake. The city of Loveland has been my home for 15 years. I have worked here for all of those years and my daughter graduated from Loveland High School in 2020. I have seen the quality of life decrease for myself, residents, and visitors of Loveland, and I am concerned. Our city of Loveland leaders have allowed special zoning and random development that has led to decrease in our quality of life, physical health, family, education, safety, and the environment. Think about the quality of life and how the decisions at hand will impact the city we call home. Do we want more traffic congestion? We want to force our already full school system to take on more students and strain the ones we already have. Do we want our police and fire departments to be responsible for the safety of hundreds of new residents? And will they be able to respond adequately? Do we want to reduce our water quality? Do we want more noise, light pollution? Are we going to allow more green space to get gobbled up by development? We live in a city that already has high taxes. I expect more from our leaders who work for us, the people of Loveland. Time for the city to it is time to reverse the course that our city leaders are forcing on this young but of a city and its people. To quote my own eight and ten year old children, building houses at railroad will cause pollution to our earth, animals to be forced from their habitat, loss of trees, and organic farmland to be destroyed. Our children will bear the burden of the decisions made today. The city of Loveland on behalf of the citizens of Loveland should consider the wise words of the next generation. question, and that is, 
Why did the writers of the city charter who wrote the annexation laws, why did they write in a low density requirement? Why did, why? Why did, did they have the foresight to see that, an, that when the annexations come in, they should be low density? Why did they do that? They, I think the answer is they knew that high density would lead to all these problems that we're talking about tonight. They also saw what happened, in, you know, they don't want to be the city of Cincinnati. We don't live in Cincinnati, we live in Lowe. They don't want, they don't want the negative consequences that come with that. I'm asking the commission to hold true tonight to the annexation laws that were written by those members who had that foresight. Only in extraordinary situations should this commission scrap our existing laws. A 209 home cookie cutter development, stone's throw away from downtown, this certainly does not fit the bill. In negotiations, it's often a common tactic for one party to ask for the moon on the front end. And then after some back and forth, they settle for what they wanted all along. In this case, Dries comes in asking for this high density or medium density. And maybe all along, all they're really looking for is a little bit somewhere in between. That too would be bad. I'm asking the commission to have the wisdom to see through this. Let's not play this game. Let's not waste everyone's time. I'm asking the commission to stick to our existing low density zoning as they are written. The commission should not sacrifice our community's quality of life for the wish list of this developer. Tell trees to take it or leave it. This is the, if they want to build here, then they must abide by our existing laws. These laws are written with wisdom and foresight. They were written with low density for a reason. Please deny this as the application. Next we have Rick, and I apologize for the last one. I'm sure, Mr. Chairman, Chairman, I'm sure that's me. Oh, I'll let you go. Okay. So, Matt, we've already heard from uh, Tom. Let's go, Banner. Banner. My name is Thomas Govan, I live at 155 Overlook Drive. The staff analysis makes a number of flawed, flawed conclusions and some conflicting information in their recommendation that this should go forward. I want to point out some of those things. To quote the staff analysis, the proposed project will occupy 109 acres on the site, but we already know that it's actually 111 acres, approximately. So, small difference, but it goes back to can we rely upon the staff analysis? Staff analysis states existing bonds will be protected, reducing the need for additional clearing and grading. That would be accomplished better by building fewer homes. Where these homes are built, the 209 homes plus the amenities that they're talking about, that's all going to be clear cut, John. You know that. So if you build half that number of homes, or less than half that number of homes, because we already know that the 111 acres will not support 111 one acre sites as it's currently zoned. You have to have roads. There's ponds. So we're going to talk about something less than 111 homes as existing as opposed to 209 homes. And those 209 homes, if you look at the, top, the topographical map that they provided, they're up against each other. All that's going to be clear cut. All those trees are going to go. Now, we talk about the perimeters and how this is going to protect those perimeters. Get to that in a little bit. Looking further at the staff analysis, it says lot sizes range between a minimum of 1,755 to a maximum of 3,900 feet. That's on page four. So according to that part of the analysis, the proposed lots will be between four and nine percent of the size of the current zoning, 43,000 square feet. But where do those numbers come from? Because when you look at Dries's calculations, and quite honestly, I take breezes over the staff analysis at this point. They talk about minimum lot size of 6,760 feet, or 8,060 feet, or 11,960 feet. So basically 15 to 27 percent of what the current zoning allows. So staff, I don't even know where they got those numbers. It's not explained. 
when, when I was in grade school, I wasn't always taught with math especially, you must show your work so that the teacher, or in this case, the evaluator of the staff analysis, could see how you came to that conclusion and understand how you came to that conclusion and did you, in doing your work, really understand what you were talking about. You don't have anything like that in the staff analysis. You just have raw figures that came out of the clear blue sky. Nobody in this group would rely upon those figures, and nor should you. So the staff recommendation that this should go forward is based upon well, garbage input, quite honestly. State, state analysis further approximates 37 acres of space will be retained by this plan. Once again, the staff doesn't explain how that calculation, but let's probably state, let's accept that figure. Looking at the topography of this land, you have a topographical map. The vast majority of that open space is sharply sloped, or as Dries indicates on, in their document, the existing conditions are steeper slopes in the southwest of the site and a ravine in the northwest of the site. Basically, undevelopable land. That's going to be open land no matter what. They're not going to put houses in those areas, even if you try to go with the current zoning of low density. And then the staff says, the developer proposes to repurpose pieces of existing structures, structures where appropriate. But Dries freely admits on page 18, all structures, current structures, will be removed. Dries states it's working with the seller to attempt to repurpose pieces and parts. What does that mean? We're asked to look at facts. What are the facts behind that statement? There are none. Now, I have to admit, I'm not an engineer or architect, but I'm rather extensively trained and experienced in topographical analysis for roads and site planning. Because for 32 years, I was a U.S. Army Cavalry officer, and that's what I did. I would do route reconnaissance. I would plan roads. I would see where units could go. I would see where columns could go. I would see where we could build maintenance facilities. I would find where we could build hospital facilities. So I have a pretty good understanding of topography and how you build things and where you can build things. The open spaces on this parcel are undevelopable. So what Dries is proposing in this SPD, you can accomplish and more so by leaving it as current zoning of one acre. The ultimate question for this committee is to make a recommendation to the city council. Please recommend no.